Is it a car or a toy? Well, the short answer to that is it's neither. This is an electrically assisted pedal tricycle. That's the official description of Sinclair's C5. Now, when Sinclair said he was going to produce an electric car, all of us, let's face it, thought he'd produce a vehicle that would carry at least two adults and do a pretty good job of taking them around their daily work. Well, we were wrong. This is certainly not a car. In fact, it's been specifically designed to exploit a loophole in the law, a loophole that was created, incidentally, in late 83, to enable this entirely new species of vehicle to be taken out of the road by anybody over the age of 14 without a driving license or road tax, without seat belts or crash helmet or side restraints, even without rear view mirrors. Indeed, with none of the apparatus that we've built up over the years to protect people who venture out onto that battlefield, that dangerous battlefield we call our roads, you can even go out without insurance, although we would certainly advise anybody using it to get themselves third-party insured, cost about 25 to 50 pounds. So how are we to regard this vehicle? I mean, is it just a, a teenage toy or plaything? Well, let's re reserve judgment until we've taken it apart, as it were. The body is made from moulded polypropylene, very tough, very light and very flexible indeed. The whole vehicle flexes when you sit in it. A great deal of play is made about the wind tunnel perfection of the aerodynamic styling, as if that really mattered in a vehicle that's got an average speed of around about 12 miles an hour. It's got a steel chassis, and because of that, the brochure compares it to the coach-built cars of the past. Y-shaped, it bears the single front wheel and the two rear wheels. Battery, obviously a very important element. Uh, like a normal 12-volt battery, simple lead acid. In fact, it's a deep discharge unit, which means you can uh, run it flat and recharge it again three or 400 times in its lifetime, which of course you can't do with a, a standard battery. It takes eight hours to recharge from flat. Motor is about the same size as a washing machine motor. Sits there under the rear seat uh, from Polymotor in Italy. In fact, it will be serviced by Hoover mechanics calling at your home, although no comment is made about how much they'll charge as a minimum call charge. It drives this near side wheel through a reduction gear box and a toothed belt and through glass fibre reinforced nylon gears. There's a little luggage boot at the back end. In fact, that's all the luggage carrying space. A great deal of play is made about the wife uh, using the C5 for shopping. Quite how she gets the shopping home, I'm not sure. Brakes are standard uh, bike cable type brakes. Calipers on the front wheel, a little drum brake on this uh, rear wheel here. Pedals, let me not forget the pedals because you could do a lot of pedaling to get this thing home. They are in the standard position for all uh, kiddie cars at the front end of the chassis. Extras on this vehicle, rear view mirrors, uh, the seat cushion is extra, even the horn, would you believe, is extra, and so are the mud flaps. So where does that leave us? Well, if you take all those elements in isolation, and here we've got a sort of exploded car, there's that uh, chassis I was talking about, it's difficult to see why any of it should earn the tag high-tech or revolution. It's all pretty well-proven stuff. There is, of course, an onboard microprocessor to make sure the motor isn't overtaxed or overheated, but that's not very novel these days either. And there's nothing revolutionary about the performance. Well, it's certainly child's play to drive. You simply turn the key, press the go button, and away you go. It's very stable, I must say, very manoeuvrable. It bumps a bit on the bumps and ridges of the road, but nothing untoward. And you can certainly see how a child who hasn't had control of a car before, you get a great deal of fun buzzing around in a thing like this. As indeed could adults, trundling around on country lanes, quiet, provided they're not too long, nor too hilly. If the roads are too steep, then the microprocessor cuts the motor out to stop it overheating, and from then on you're on your own pedaling. Although the official range is claimed to be 20 miles, that's generally thought to be a bit generous, so you could spend a lot of time pedaling this car home. And of course, there's no reverse, you simply put your feet on the road and push yourself backwards. So, as far as I can see, there's nothing the C5 can do that a bicycle couldn't do more economically, more flexibly, and indeed more safely. So, I suppose the acid test is would I take this vehicle on a motorway? or through a standard city rush hour, I think the answer has to be, I wouldn't. And if I wouldn't, I wouldn't let my children either. So I think what people are getting for their £399 is essentially a uh, low speed, short range, very economical, fun vehicle. And I'm sure a lot of people will think it's a bargain at that. As for Clive Sinclair's electric car, I think we're still waiting for it. <laughs>